sound check? Can you please say something? Yeah. Kip, Kip, Kip. A, B, A, B, A, B. John, say something, please. Generally speaking, it's going to be about at this volume, but no guarantees. Cause <laughs> my voice I love goes the sing song native sound. My voice goes nuts. <laughs> we can't wait to see you perform. Oh, y'all look good on that couch. That's a pretty retro yeah. couch. Keep your clipboard. Okay, leave the clipboard there, actually, because now we've zoomed in by your right arm. Okay, fabulous. Sound, are you speeding? Sounds good. Awesome. Cameras. Rolling. And action. John, pleasure to meet you and to have the honor to interview you and thank you for taking the time. Um, if we could start off just by you telling me about your history with hemp, how you got involved as an advocate um, and just a little bit about your, your past and how you've uh, gone and been on this journey. Well, it's a lot to tell. Huh? So, um, but we'll just, with the hemp thing, you know, well, I mean, practical reality, I've had a relationship with cannabis in general since I was 17, so the last 50 years or whatever, right? Um, but about, f I lose track of time, but about four or five years ago. It doesn't exist anyway. Yeah, that's right. It's, <laughs> it doesn't here. <laughs> so about four or five or six years ago, whatever it was, I, I was presented with an opportunity, right, to maybe uh, kind of focus on something that would be really of importance to me. And, uh, sorry, and for whatever reason, hemp came into my mind. But, well, no, the reason hemp came into my mind is because, you know, uh, because when you look at what they call this climate change thing, right? Well, I, what I know about hemp is I know that it can provide oxygen for a sky that's being suffocated by carbon dioxide or monoxide or whatever it is, all right? And it can be done on a renewable basis and still at the same time, all right, provide for us from shelter to everything. And, and I'm looking around at what's just going on socially, politically, and environmentally, seeing everybody's scattered. You know, it's either it's anti-fracking, or, or it's anti-nukes, or it's anti-OLC, but these segments, see? But, uh, and, and I'm looking at, so I look, and, and then there's the same thing going on at the same time, it's about um, green economy, green economics, all this kind of alternative energy, all these things going on, and I looked at hemp, and hemp is, Obviously, to me, I, I look at it as an earth medicine, right? And it, because it would be applicable in every one of these anti-positions. Mm -hmm. It would be something that would help, all right? Because, I mean, if you looked at hemp, you know, I think the anti-fracking movement, they should be endorsing hemp, growing hemp. There'll be no need for the fracking. See, for several of these things, and I'm not saying that I think people should uh, not prioritize what they're already doing. I'm saying that maybe there should be some discussion to include hemp. Because I look at it as an earth medicine, and you know, what kind of actually triggered that in my mind is because it was a medical marijuana movement, you know, and, and we want this medicine for us because of the THC factor, and actually CBD is coming out of industrial hemp, that's right. But so but looking at the medical marijuana aspects of it, you know, and I'm hearing us, you know, here we are, we're talking about medicine for us, medicine for us, medicine for us. And, and my feeling is, well, hold it. The medicine for the earth, seeing hemp, you know, let's be inclusive of the earth. Let's do this for the earth. It's, to me, it's like an environmental thing. Let's do this for the earth because it is earth medicine. It would help us to, re to reduce our, our addiction and dependency on the fossil plastic chemical reality. So it just popped into my, somewhere in there I was looking for what's the best way to go because I just see too much fragmentation. And so hemp was where I, that's what uh, motivated me to go after hemp. It's interesting that you um, call it earth medicine because it, it almost feels to me when you look at the benefits of hemp and cannabis on our, on our body and then you look at the hemp and the cannabis uh, that it does for the earth, it's almost like this spiritual connection that ties us back to the planet and we've been separated from it and it makes us almost step back and see the absurdity of, yeah, of our behaviors. Yeah, I mean, we've got cannabinoid receptors in our body throughout our whole body. We have a DNA physical relationship to the plant. This is reality, you know? And you know, when, I mean, as a little side thing is, you know, when I found, uh, I came across this thing that, you know, when they first went to outlaw hemp, because that was never about the marijuana, they were after the hemp. But when they first went out to outlaw the hemp, you know, the AMA that existed then opposed it. You know, it's kind of interesting, and now they oppose the legalization, but the twist, I mean, so in our grandparents' generation, hemp was, they had a relationship with hemp. 
from medicinal to all of the other aspects we're talking about. And then within one gener two generations, all that information and knowledge got disconnected, all right, because the, petro the, the forest petrochemical industry, all right, they were threatened by the, that hemp would do everything they could do and there wouldn't really be a need for them. So it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the American Medical Association. One of the uh, other stories that we've been telling is about the evolution of the medical industry and the demonization of hemp actually started with the Pope in the 1400s who said take it out of the anointing oils and if anyone uses it they're witches and we'll burn them at the stake during the Inquisition. And then you fast forward to the late 1900s when the medical establishment was really, or the late 1800s when the medical establishment was really taking its foothold and they were treating people with bloodletting and mercury and everything. Yeah. And you see every commercial on TV today, yeah, we're going to get you a bone and we're going to fix your heart, but you're going to die after you take our medicine. Yeah. It's no different now, yet they demonize not just hemp, but mushrooms which can cure cluster headaches, uh, ibogaine, which will get people have heroin addiction. So it's all these earth medicines that they've kept from us. They demonize. See, they demonize medicine and replace medicine with, nar with narcotic of some, in su to some degree and form. With a, with, they, re they demonize medicine and replace it with some type of a chemical, mm -hmm. all right? Because the earth, because number one, the earth doesn't grow drugs. This doesn't happen, all right? Man makes drugs through a chemical process out of the plants and herbs that the earth grows. See, so, so when I look at things like mushrooms and, and hemp, and various things that come out of the earth, right? They are medicines and they should be used as a medicine. Yeah, and, and, but we no longer have that understanding. I, I mean, because you know, unfortunately, a lot of times I think that people go after using some of these, sacred, the, the, what I call sacred things, these medicines, and, and sometimes they misuse it, you know, in the chase. So this is why there really needs to be a clear understanding of what really this is all about. You know, and so what our approach to it is we're looking at hemp, industrial hemp, our whole objective is to get people thinking about it. That's our goal. Get it out there however we can and get people thinking about it. Because, I mean, practical reality, you know, it would create practical reality. People talk about the economics of recreational and medicinal marijuana. The economics of industrial hemp would dwarf Absolutely. the economics of these recreational and, and, and medicinal. Just dwarf with, it. Just with medicinal hemp, they're estimating with legalization $120 billion in tax revenue. And like you said, the hemp industry would dwarf that. It so you're talking it. trillions and trillions yeah. of dollars. See, so that's why, but, and that's why the petrochemical group, right, they oppose this because that's going to be their billions and billions of dollars. That's how they're kind of looking right. at it, right? And, but our feeling, I mean, because, I mean, frankly, you know, I think democracy is a big lie. I think democracy is just this, this little mask they put on, really, and, well, there's a, that industrial ruling class, they kind of, everything answers and it subserves subversive to them. But I think that, but if you put this information out there, because people, you, when you look at it now, there's a certain desperation coming in this society because of the new redistribution of the wealth. And I think that out of desperation of nothing else, many people will be willing to listen and consider, all right, alternative ways to deal with the situation. You know, and so one of the things we did is, with what we're doing, we will work with anyone, but we're trying to focus on the identity of industrial hemp. This isn't about medical marijuana. It isn't about the pot aspects. This is about industrial hemp and getting people to recognize the value to it. And, and we're, our, we chose to approach the, the Grange, work with the people of the land. Because, because, you know, when I look back at all of the movements, I'm 68, all the stuff that went on in my life, we never had a movement that was really, had, had land-based people. The anti-war movement, all this stuff. See, but we never had, it was never inclusive of the people who are land-based. And see, hemp gives us that opportunity to be inclusive of the farmers, the people that work with the land. And you're talking specifically about your Hempstead Project Heart. Hempstead Project Heart, yes. I mean, that's what we're doing. That's our approach. But our objective is we just want to stimulate discussion because we figure if people are, are talking about it, then they're thinking about it. Because right now, see, because I, I, I just, it's like the, like America has been psychologically traumatized, you know, in the last 10 years, especially with it, the, there's the psychological, psychological trauma that has happened since nobody's thinking clearly. Everything is now an emotional reaction to fear. Yep. All right, Absolutely. everything, see, so, you know, so we're just trying to find a way to put, introduce something that would make sense. And our whole approach to it is, we're not asking anybody to believe us. I don't want people to believe me. What, what I want is that people, if what we're saying makes sense to them, then we want them to go look. All right, we want them to examine the facts and take on the, because part of the project part is 
Yeah, our real goal is we want to put enough information out there that if it makes sense to people, then they will now go into the internet, all right, and they will research and find everything they possibly can about industrial hemp on their own. Because we feel that that's, you know, because people, because, I mean, when you, because, and then they, if they would go and take and make sense to people that they think it makes sense to. Because this is our idea, because, you know, the old movement stuff of the past, it doesn't really work. I mean, we need to be thinking in terms of, we need to be thinking in terms of thinking, all right, and thinking objectively, all right, uh, to recognize the reality that we're in. Because in my own opinion, all right, all the political movements, activists, I've been involved, you know, all my adult life, you know, but when, when push comes to shove, hey, we didn't cut it. The beast is bigger and more dangerous than they were before we started out because their technology makes them more dangerous, their drugs makes them, all right, so we didn't cut it. All right, so what I think is the best thing, so we need to learn from that. We, it, it's time to not pass on to the next generation our same mistakes. We hear, do it this way, go on and just protest because it's good to protest or whatever, and this gives you an emotional outlet. No, we need to introduce some thinking into what's going on here. We have to have a better product for them to turn to because most people aren't going to figure that out. And well, they're so, and you hit on it, it's like we have to move from fear to love. We well, have to. Well, I'd say from fear to coherence, all right? And, and, and the thing is, is because... And, and when I look at, see, nobody's encouraging thinking. All, I mean, what I would look at is, say, environmental, what we call movement allies and stuff, nobody is encouraging thinking. Everybody is encouraging, believe me. Believe what I'm saying. Believe my story. Nobody is encouraging thinking. All right, now, in my own, frankly, in my own opinion, nothing's going to change if we don't change our thinking. All right, I mean thinking because, you know, we've been imprinted to believe. We've been imprinted to believe the lie. We've been imprinted to believe there's something wrong with us. We've been imprinted to fear who we are. We've been imprinted to believe, to believe, to believe, to the point of now where we, we believe thinking. Believing is, we call it thinking, but it's not. You know, and so we, we look at, because when I, this whole idea of power of the people and, and all of, we are, everything is about energy, all right? And when we look at, the, everything is about energy, and when we think, you know, we project electromagnetic energy. But when we believe, we're not projecting it in the same kind of a way. Well, I, I so, think it's, we have to change our thinking, but we have to first change our feeling about what we're thinking. Because they, they've done a lot of studies, and I'm sure you're aware of these, but the heart puts out 10 times, or 10,000 times the electromagnetic energy that the brain does. Yeah. And I think we have to get people to, in my opinion, change yeah. how we feel about our thinking, and then we think. Right, right now we're thinking, and like you said, we're thinking from panic. Yeah, it's, well, see, because I got this thing here. See, we're, we, we're not thinking from what we feel because we're not really feeling anymore. See, we're reacting, we're emotionally reacting to what we believe. See, we have, we're not really thinking and feeling anymore. See, the slight of mind that's gone on through this, this whole civilizing trauma process itself, people, we suppress our feelings because we can't express how we feel. I mean, a great many people suppress their feelings in different disguised ways, and then, and then when something comes along, there's these emotional reactions. See, but an emotional reaction never represents clear thinking. You're never gonna think clear when you're having an emotional reaction. See, so there are certain concepts that we really need to look at and examine. You know, because, number one, uh, we need to think more and believe less. You know, if we're really, this is about how I'm looking at how do we really activate, stimulate energy. We need to recognize reality and not judge it. These are, you know, and we need, we need to like ourselves. All right, and if, because if, if we can't synchronize those three things, then we're just chasing the wind. You know, we're in, the, the beast will always, up, will always overwhelm us and will always overpower us. Because every one of these things, the belief, the, the lack of liking of self, the fear, every bit of that is, was imprinted into our consciousness, all right, by, by a predatory civilization. So we need to be thinking philosophically in terms of thinking, feeling, all right? But we need, it's almost like we need to look at things differently than we've been looking at them. And, and I gotta go back to Recognize reality and not judge it, because when you recognize, you really see what's going on. When you judge, you don't see anything, yeah. all right? Not really, you just see the judgment. And the thing about the judging is, you will, we will always judge. If we're judges, we'll always judge ourselves the harshest, no matter what, <laughs> how we vent it towards others. This is going to take the hardest hit, yeah. right? And, and, if we're, and, and, and we've been imprinted to judge ourselves, so we don't recognize our abilities. And then this is what produces the fear reaction. 
So, and, and, and I think, and so we need to think about it, but I think it's important to like ourselves. Because if reality is we have no reason not to. And for all the reasons we as individuals carry that we don't like ourselves through our lowest self-esteem, whatever that's, right? For, but for all the reasons that we do that to ourselves, if we would just think and understand, we didn't think it up. See, all these negatives, we, we're throwing at ourselves. Somebody put it there until we believed it, but we didn't think a bit of it up. Somebody put it there until we believed it. And I think it's important to recognize that because if I'm, because I hear a lot of talk about love and replacing love. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm wary of people whose love is based upon their fear of life and their dislike of themselves. I mean, I'm not questioning their intentions, but I'm questioning understanding. Because, because there has to be a synchronization of our energy, how we think and how we feel need to be, all right, with, in, in a certain sense of clarity need to be synchronized, all right, to, I put it like this, if we have a problem, the energy we take to creating a solution to that problem is going to be in the solution. So if we're emotionally reacting out of our fear and our low self-esteem to create solutions to a problems that exist, whether it's environmental, whatever it is, then that's the energy that's going to be put in the solution. You know, and so it's a matter we've got to re-recognize re who we are as human beings. You know? well, I think a lot of people use the word love without understanding what love is. Yeah, I said, well, I mean, love is an interesting thing. See, I, see me, I just kind of think, well, if I, I settle for like. I don't even need love, you know, because I found that people that like each other, they treat each other better than a lot of people who love each other do. I mean, you get down, see, love is kind of an interesting term that we got put in there that we use frivolously. I think we misuse the word and we don't really understand the word because I've seen people do outrageous things to each other in the name of love or they use that as their justification. But when you see people that truly like each other and care about each other, it's a whole different behavior. See, so anyway, what I'm getting at, there are certain things we really need to look at because, you know, we've been imprinted, you know, you know we've been imprinted, all right, to perceive reality unnaturally. You know, and it's almost like, you know, because everything's about energy. So, you know, when we think we project electromagnetic thought, all right, the energy, and when we, the vibratory reality, and when we speak, we're putting sound into the vibratory reality, all right? And, and it's almost sometimes I think we've been imprinted with these words that create these sounds that don't synchronize with how we feel or think, all right? And then it creates this chaos and this confusion. Because, you know, I mean, uh, love is one of the words that I think we need to be, we should show more respect to and use it more carefully because, when, because especially when we're saying, when we haven't dealt with the issues of self-fear. Mm -hmm. See, so I think there's a whole philosophical look that we need, discussion that we need to start having, even just about the terminology that we use. When, when, when I'm speaking specifically about love, I, I think I could go easily with your term of like, because what I'm talking about is yeah. that energy field that connects everything, all infinitely. Yeah. That we're all a part of everything, so it's collaboration, like, love, those yeah. are all synonymous to me. Yeah. But, and in accepting what is as reality. But like is the heart of love. <laughs> you know, yeah. But no, I'm, I'm not trying to start anything, oh, but no, I just, no, these no, things no. just go so through I, my mind. What is your, in your opinion, what do you think hemp is going to do now that we've got eight states that pass, and for instance, this incredible celebration of bringing all these great minds together, what do you think HIP is going to do for the future of the farmer? It, I think, oh, hemp will save the family farm. Yeah, but the, the, I mean, for the farms, because it's one of the reasons that we're, we're working with the farms, because it, it would save the family farm in the sense that it would, create, it would just generate an economic base that's unreal, all right? And it would save the family farm in the sense of they could generate this economic base without having to poison the land all right, and the water in order to do it, all right? And then it spirals out from there. Well, here now you've got all this hemp, you know, and you can make houses out of it, you can make cars out of it, you can make clothes. See, so now here's this whole new set of industries that come out of it. You know, so, so, uh, so hemp has the ability, hemp wants to help us, but are we intelligent enough, all right, <laughs> to, under, to recognize that want? that hemp is extending to us. That's really how I look at it. Are we, are we intelligent enough to recognize reality here? Exactly. Right? But Kip has a brilliant question for you in regard to, if you could sum up in one word what you consider to be the encompassing word to describe the hemp plant, what is that word for you? 
medicine. You are an amazing poet. Oh, medicine. sorry. Say it's it again. Me medicine. It is medicine. You know, and then that's what it is. I mean, it's the and one would word. Would you mind looking at our camera and saying, my name is John Trudell and I am a hempster? Well, uh, I don't you know can about say it however you want to say it. <laughs> however, my words, right? Okay. Uh, We'd like for you to make my a song name, out of it, actually. <laughs> my, name, John, my, my name is John Friedel. I have can cannabinoid receptors in my body. I am part hemp. Thank you so much. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. That works. That was beautiful. All right, cool. We've I get lost sometimes. Right. You cast a spell, by the way, <laughs> as a musician poet, which you really are, but you're so lyrical in the way you speak that you literally do cast a spell when you perform, and even for this interview, like, it's just emanating. It's fabulous. Do you feel in your heart of hearts that if, if we embrace hemp fully right now that we can change our ways and that we can save the planet? Well... It isn't about saving the planet, it's about saving ourselves. The planet will outlast us. Whatever, whatever we do, we're doing to us. And the planet, will, the planet will evolve. The planet has been through everything. So we're not gonna wreck this planet, we're not gonna destroy it, what we're going to do. So it's a matter of hemp is an opportunity for us to help us save ourselves. But the planet will endure. You know, I mean, you know, you know, the dinosaurs lasted longer than we are. Right? For sure, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> right? When they got to be too many, you know, nature took care of it. Yeah. But no, I, but I think that him, uh, I think hip is the next logical, sensible direction for us to go in. We have an ancestral, we have an ancient ancestral relationship with him. And it's time to, you know, and we recognize that because, you know, and it's time to, because, you know, the world, I mean, one of the plus things about it is, Civilization couldn't have evolved the way that it evolved without hemp. This is basic reality. I mean, they made sails, they made rope, they made, you know, without hemp. You know, it, it, I mean, up until the mid-1880s, hemp was the largest cultivated crop on this planet. And so we have, we have a relationship to hemp. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much.